So you're thinking about moving to Boca Raton. Well, today I am going to talk about the pros and cons of living in Boca Raton. We're going to talk about accessibility, the schools. We're going to talk about the weather, beaches, the real estate, and much more. And we're going to get after it right now. If you're new to this channel and you want to know everything that there is to know about living in Boca Raton, just subscribe below, tap the bell button for notifications to be the first to know what is new in the market in Boca Raton and in South Florida. My name is Castilla Cava with Living in South Florida. We get calls, emails every day from people just like you looking for help to move to Boca Raton and we absolutely love it. So whether you plan to move in nine days or 90 days, just give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email so I can help you make a smooth move to Boca Raton. The information is in the description below. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of living in Boca Raton. As you can see behind me, this is the Intracoastal Canal. This is one of the pros of living here in Boca Raton. And that's gonna start me out with the uh, weather in Boca Raton. This weather year round is pretty great except for the summers are pretty humid but from November until uh, about May we have weather from the high 60s to the high 70s and lower humidity and that means you can be outdoors during this time doing anything water sports uh, golfing tennis we have a lot of parks around here uh, as, as far as the water sports we have boating ski doing we have uh, snorkeling uh, paddle boarding, kite boarding. It's just really endless the things that you can do outside here in Boca Raton and in South Florida. And I would say the, the cons of living in Boca Raton as far as the weather goes is that in the summertime, the humidity can get pretty bad. I'm here in the summer right now and it is pretty hot out here, uh, but it can be anywhere between the high 70s to the high 80s and we do have some pretty crazy thunderstorms that happen almost every day during the summer from june until september those are about two hours long and they have a lot of uh, lightning and thunder and so you do need to make sure that you find shelter when that happens and then of course we have the issue with hurricanes that happen you know anywhere between the end of may until about november ish and that's just something that comes with the territory. Luckily, you know ahead of time when they're coming. But basically what I would say is if you're moving to Boca Raton or to South Florida, just make sure that you have a knowledgeable real estate agent that can help you when you're looking for a place to live, that you can uh, find out what the flood zones are and make sure if that house that you're choosing to move into and to purchase is one that has uh, that is in a flood zone, then make sure that you have flood insurance and homeowner's insurance. The next thing I'd like to share with you are the beaches in Boca Raton. They are really great beaches here and they're very nice, clean, well taken care of and a lot of space to spread out. So it's a great place for you to go uh, hang out by yourself, bring a friend, bring family to the beach. It's not gonna be crowded as much as some of the other beaches, say in Fort Lauderdale or Miami Beach. So it's a really great plus. I would say the cons though for the beach is the parking. So if you're gonna arrive early to the beach, then you might not have as much of a problem. You can maybe find free or some metered parking on the adjacent streets. But if you aren't going so early or you don't wanna walk or anything like that, then you're gonna want to park at the parking lots that are right off of the beach. So they're right there but you are going to be paying a hefty price tag of up to $35 a day for that parking. And it doesn't matter whether you stay one hour or two hours, you're still gonna be paying that $35. So there are some other options though. If you want to go a little bit more south to Deerfield Beach, you can do that. They have metered parking, especially if you're just gonna go for like a couple hours or something, or you can go to Delray Beach, which is just north, and that's another option for you as well. One of the great, great, great things about Boca Raton and what it's known for are the golf courses here. There are 34 golf courses, and then of course there are more in Delray Beach and other places nearby. And those golf courses are arranged from being public, municipal, 
There are also private and semi-private golf courses. There are also a lot of really great parks here. So if you're interested in going to the park, hanging out, very peaceful, lots of nature, lots of places to bring your kids. Two of the main ones that I would mention to you today is that the Sugar Sand Park, that one has a children's science center, really great. And then it has an outdoor area, really big play area that's kind of interactive as well. And it has a little splash pad there. So that one's really, really nice. And then there's another one on the west side of Boca, as far west as you can get. It, it's right up next to the Everglades. And that one is the Burt Arison South County Park. And that one has a lot. It has over 800 acres. It has a public golf course. It has a water park with even a lazy river inside. It has a lot of like tennis courts, basketball courts, and uh, baseball diamonds. It has a tennis program there. So there's just a lot to offer. Oh, it also has a, a boat launch and a ski-doo launch. So there's a little lake there that you can go to and launch your boat or launch your ski-doo and have some fun there. The next thing I'd like to mention that is really well known here at Boca Raton are the schools. The schools are really great here and they are known for their public schools. I would say the middle school and high school have a higher rating in all areas pretty much in Boca Raton, whereas the elementary school not always the same around the whole area. So you might wanna look at that when you're moving. And But the, there's a lot of options for private schools as well. And there's a really excellent, outstanding community for homeschooling. So if you are interested in homeschooling your kids, there are a lot of activities here, especially outdoor activities for kids to learn and a lot of, um, families that get together in the community for homeschooling advantages as well. So very nice to look into if that's an option for you here. I would say um, a con for schools, really don't have a whole lot to, to talk about for cons, but I guess I would say just to make sure that when you're moving to Boca Raton, that you pay attention to zoning because the zoning of schools can be a little bit tricky. So make sure that you work with a real estate agent that knows this information that can help you out with that and kind of explain the zoning with you. And that way, if you're looking for a home specific because of schooling purposes, then you can uh, get that help that you need to in order to do that. Another great thing is the entertainment here. So a pro of living in Boca Raton is that there is a lot of outdoor entertainment and indoor entertainment as well. But one of the best ones being Meisner Park. That's right in the center of downtown Boca Raton. That one has a lot of outdoor um, seating for dining. It has an outdoor amphitheater. It has also a movie theater. It has an art museum. It has really an eclectic mix of dining and boutique shops. And there is, there's even some residential condos in that area as well. And spreading just even south from there are a lot more options for dining and just kind of hanging out, especially for nightlife. There is also the town center in Boca Raton. That is an indoor outdoor kind of higher end shopping area that you can go to. They have some dining there. And then if you want to go more west, because that's those two are in the east side of uh, Boca Raton. If you want to go to the west side, there's Uptown Boca, which has a an whole area right at Uptown Boca and spread out from there. Some shopping areas and dining as well. And you can just find a lot of options. There's a uh, little strip outdoor strip malls all around Boca Raton that you can enjoy dining and shopping experiences. Let's now talk about the pros and cons of the transportation and accessibility in Boca Raton. I would say most of it is a pro, not a con. There is a little bit of a con. Let's start with that first. And that is just that, you know, you're in, you're in a, a city and there's gonna be a lot of traffic during those heavier traffic times of the day, just like any other place, especially on I-95, which is the main highway here. We have I-95, we have the Turnpike. We have three airports that are pretty close to us in Boca Raton. And I would say that's definitely a plus especially if you like to travel or you have people that are visiting and or you travel for business. Then we have the Palm Beach International Airport that's about 30 minutes north of Boca Raton. We have the Fort Lauderdale International Airport and that's about 35 maybe, 
about 35 minutes south of Boca Raton. And then we have the Miami International Airport and that depending on traffic is anywhere between 50 to an hour and 20 minutes south of us. But really cool to have those three options right here, very close to us. There are two main train stations. There is the tri-rail train station. That is more of like a commuter train. In fact, a lot of companies will will pay for, or you can get a discount rate in order to use that train for commuting. People will use that for commuting to work. And they will also use it to commute to the Miami International Airport because it goes directly to the International Airport in Miami. It starts at West Palm Beach, goes to a Boca Raton and down through uh, the different cities. It will actually stop at a stop called the Fort Lauderdale International Airport shuttle stop. And that one will, there's a shuttle that's free that will take you to the Fort Lauderdale International Airport as well. So you'll see a lot of people on that train that have their luggage ready to travel or coming back from travel. And then there is the Brightline train. This is a newer train, super cool train. It is a high speed train. It goes from West Palm Beach to uh, Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, Adventura, and downtown Miami. And this is actually growing and is going to be starting in September, I believe, to be having the train go all the way to Orlando. So it's really becoming a popular thing. It is more of a luxury um, train compared to the tri-rail train. So you can expect that the prices are going to be a little bit higher, but they offer a lot more as far as like just the look of the inside of the train and the train station. It is a covered train station. There are food and beverages for purchase. And there is an, there's even a premium lounge if you buy the ticket for the premium ticket. There are also three cruise ports in close to Boca Raton. So we have the Palm Beach cruise port and we have the Fort Lauderdale and one in Miami. So very close by, if you like to take cruises, it's really cool. You don't have to take a plane to get to your cruise ship. So uh, it, it's a really great option for you. Another thing I'd like to talk to you about is the fact that there are HOAs here in Boca Raton. So there are a lot of communities and the communities, some of them are gated communities, some of them are non-gated. So there's a lot of different options. And of course, depending on what there is, the more that you're gonna pay being in a, in a specific community, right? So I would say the, po the pros of a HOA are the fact that you're gonna find really nice groomed lawns and shrubbery. It's gonna look nice and clean inside and there's going to be a security um, guard around. So you're gonna, feel like more secure, things are going to be more secure inside your community if you have an HOA and it's gated and manned. There are a lot of rules and regulations, which can be a really great thing, meaning that you know people have to follow these rules and regulations when living in these communities. Therefore, you can have a high expectation of what things are gonna be like in there. But I would say a con for HOA, there's a few cons. One is being that if you uh, have so talking about the rules and regulations, if you have a commercial vehicle because you own your own company or work for another company, uh, you're gonna have an issue with parking that vehicle inside that community overnight or on weekends without either covering it or sometimes they won't even allow it there at all. So just something to think about ahead of time. And then also there are rules and regulations based on pets. So if you have a larger dog or a certain type of dog, you might have an issue being accepted into a homeowners association in the community. And then also sometimes the applications can really take a long time when you are applying for them to buy a home or even to lease a place. So just make sure that you work with a, a knowledgeable real estate agent such as myself that can communicate well with the homeowners association that knows this information, knows what to, uh, to do what questions to ask and ways to help you in order to kind of speed that process along because it can take up to three weeks to a month in order to get your application for your homeowners association approved. It can even take longer than that. So just something to think about ahead of time so that you're prepared when you make your move to Boca Raton. Let's talk about the wildlife and pests in Boca Raton and in South Florida. 
I would really like to talk about the pros because I love the wildlife here with the birds, the butterflies, the manatee, the turtles. There are a lot of really cool, interesting things, especially if you're interested in snorkeling. You can really explore the waters and enjoy a variety of different um, sea life. If you're interested in learning more about these creatures and even kind of the crazy ones that we're going to talk about with the cons, then you can go to some refuge centers or wildlife nature centers and you can learn about these different wildlife creatures and uh, explore a little bit more about them. And one of the places is the Gumbo Limbo Nature Center that's right here off the, the A1A, right across from the beach in Boca Raton. I definitely suggest that you check it out. It will share a lot of information about turtles and about other wildlife that are here in Boca Raton and in South Florida. All right, let's get into the cons of wildlife. So if you're living closer to the Everglades on the west side of Boca, you are going to experience more of the alligator life. Ooh. All right, so you need to just be careful and knowledgeable of alligators, of iguanas, which you can see everywhere, actually, not just on the west side, snakes, and just know that when you are closer to the water, you're going to be closer to these creatures. So if you're closer to the Everglades, to some waterways out in that area, then you're going to be more likely to see them. So just be careful, especially walking with small dogs and small kids, and just make yourself knowledgeable about what to expect with them. Iguanas aren't really dangerous at all, I guess, unless you chase them, but you know, they're everywhere. People just think they're kind of uh, ugly, I guess. I, I think they're kind of cute. So another thing is if you're out in the ocean, sharks, of course, are an issue. There's also uh, jellyfish. So just make sure when you go to the beach, there are lifeguard stations and there are information boards that you can look at and they will share with you like things, important information for the day about the tide, rip tides, if there are any dangerous sea life. And just make sure that when you go out on the beach that you understand what's out there to prepare yourself. Other than that, usually it's just having fun. <laughs> have fun in the water, it is amazing. We have three main pests here in South Florida. One being mosquitoes, which absolutely suck, literally. Roaches and many species of ants. So just make sure that when you move to South Florida that you find a trustworthy pest control company that can make sure that your home is healthy and pest free and when you move to South Florida, I can definitely help you with that. The last thing I'd like to share with you is about the real estate. So real estate here, there are a lot of pros and there are some cons as well. So let's go over those. The pros of real estate are the fact that we have a really high value um, here. So that means that what you buy is just gonna grow in value. This is different from a lot of places in the states, um, in the nation. So basically even when there is an economic churn downwards usually South Florida still stays high especially in Boca Raton we are obviously in a destination location where everybody wants to come here and that means that you know this is great weather we have beaches we have all these outdoor activities most of the year and so that of course is going to be a a pro another thing is the fact that there are a lot of choices here as far as living so there's luxury homes there are single family homes townhomes villas condos there is a lot of options so that's definitely a plus and if you're an investor and you want to buy property whether it's a multi-family or you want to buy a single family home this is a great place for you because the rental market here in boca raton is excellent so definitely a place that you can invest in if you'd like to. All right, so let's talk about the cons of the real estate market in Boca Raton. The first one being the high cost. The houses here are very high in cost, so you need to be aware of that. Make sure you work with a real estate agent that is going to show you that information and be honest with you about that. With that comes the fact that the property taxes are very high as well and they continue to grow every year. So you need to make sure that you can calculate that into your monthly bill if you're getting a mortgage or whatever and make sure that you're living comfortably even with that cost. And this is a competitive market, so that's definitely a con in the sense you need to make sure you have everything ready, that you have talked with a mortgage broker, you've gotten pre-approved, 
to buy your home so that when you do go out and look for a home and you find the one that you really want that you're ready to make an offer because there are going to be several people making an offer on the same home and you want to make sure that you're happy with your choice and that you are successful in getting that home that you want and then the last thing is that this is a seasonal market so it does change a little bit in the winter months when it's high season it's going to be a little bit more expensive and then prices drop a little bit more in the summertime so just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking for a home so basically with the real estate make sure that you know about the cost of living the cost of the homes you have your mortgage ready uh pre-approval and you understand that you're going to have to be competitive when it comes to buying your home and putting a bid. I hope that the information about the pros and cons of living in Boca Raton have been helpful for you and helping you decide whether you would like to move to Boca Raton. And please remember whether you're planning to move in nine days or in 90 days or nine months, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email or even set up a Zoom call so that I can help you make a smooth move to Boca Raton. And until next time, I hope to show you around town.